Hi, my name is Frederick Nordwall, and I'm going to be your host in the series of upcoming videos. We will make sure they can utilize both our services and our product in the best way possible. Today's topic is going to be about this. Hi and welcome. By now you should be able to have your login. Um, and when you log in for the first time successfully, this is the start position when you log in to land our direct. So it's called your mapping. It's the structure of your account. I'm using a test uh, environment, a test customer, but hopefully this will be something similar you can see on your screen. Let's start about the top. We have, it says employer details, but it's really the account details, the customer number, the general, the contact. And if something is wrong here, please let us know and we will be able to correct it. Just uh, send a mail at info at landauer.so and we will do that. Your profile is really about you, your login, last name, email, etc. But you can also modify and change your password. So let's go to the mapping. This is the most critical one. So you have a dark blue, light blue, and white. These are subdivisions and sub-accounts. So this is the invoice information. It's under this one. This one here, it's where we're actually going to send the dose meters and also the dose reports. And then we have subdivision. Some of you might have the same subdivision name, in this case, test.no. It's because we bundle them together. Both where period should be same, but also slotted or alligator are not in the same subdivision. It has to do with our production. There's also a way to see uh, inactive subdivisions by clicking here or uh, inactive sub accounts. What does it mean? There's no active services. And by that way, they, they don't show because there's no activity. I'm sure as your customer, you, you don't see this, but I have played around with it quite much. So this is why I have this one. So I recommend, first of all, you start with this one, and then you can see on the right, there's an export. One is exporting your mapping. It's actually the structure of your, uh, of your setup. So in this case, I only have one customer account. Some of you might have more than one account. And then you have the sub account. You can see three, four, and five. So I have three, four, five. I have the different subdivisions. And I have participants. It doesn't give you the active. You can see there's one, two, three active. And uh, if you go in here and export your benefits, this is what is in our system right now as well. But this is only give you the, you know, the real down to services. So we can see that area is a two month uh, environment alligator. There's two of these body and there's two of these Frederick. Uh, and it can happen that you can see this, especially if you have a mix between body and rings. So let's go back to this. So when you click on this, we can also see how many active participants you have. In this case, I have three in this quiz zero. So the things that we need to do from customer service side is changing the setup. So if you have a new department or you have a department who decides to go for monthly, we need to set it up at info.landauer.se. And the same is if you want other services, and we come back to that later, that is not selectable for you. It's the same thing. We need to add the different services. So let's start going into the bi-monthly and see what we can do. I click the subdivision. The subdivision tells us what it is all about. And then you have a menu. You have something that called transfer. And then you have two which adds things, three that actually add things. So the first one is meaning if a person is moving from one department to another, you can easily move them around. 
make sure they have the same wear period or the same service. Otherwise, there's other tricks. And we will cover that in the, the next video. Here, you also have the availability to add services. You can add an area monitor or you can add a visitor. A visitor is uh, what we call a known name there's no person connected to the visitor and you can have that ordering and you can connect them later. I'll show that in a bit. Or you can add the participant. You can also filter here. So if I want to filter for my name, Nord, I can easily spot my name and can see what I am. This is me, a wording, the social security number. For some reason, if the social security number is wrong, you will have a red line through it and make sure that you update it if you want us to report into National Dose Registry. We have a participants, but you can also see that this is inactive from. But let's add the participant. We click on add. Here you search for the name. We call him Nord. You, and you can see there's two. But his last name is actually Nord. And if you click on the right, you can click here to add new participant. You click here. And the last name is Nord. And his first name is Tord, Tord Nord. He's uh, nothing. We don't use that. He has a social security number three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it should be numbers like this. If, if you have an employee number as well, one, four, four, six, we can add it. We're working currently to fix the occupational list to be more unite what we have in the Nordics. But this guy is a radio, he's a researcher. What category is it? Is it public A or B? And this is me, I'm gonna be a B. Date of birth, I'm not born 1931. I will put the, I will make myself a little bit younger. So I put myself here. And this one is not currently in use, but it's some cases that we're trying to implement in the future. So if you're working in, in the nuclear industry, you have a you need to do the medical exam every uh, two years. So when that's done, you can see here it's not valid. So for me to make this a little bit simpler, I will not put it in. I will just go here. So if you have the wrong number, it doesn't let you go in put no number in, you can add it, and then you can make sure that you have the right uh, information. So here you can have a requesting closing date. So this, if this is a temporary worker and says he's only going to be here until uh, uh, 2023, and it's going to stop working 1st of November, you can put it in. And all you need to do now is press validate. So that means that every service I have connected to this person will disappear. But we don't have a service yet. So let's go in and press add service. We do it around here in the right corner. And here is what I talked in the beginning of the video. If there is something here that you miss, that's not available for you, you need to contact us and we add it. It could be, for example, uh, ring size, whatever. So in this case, it's actually me and I want to have a vision, right type of medium. I put the starting date. I said the starting date should be uh, 2022 and we put it not in December, we put it in 1st of February. If I don't put an end date here, it will just continue as a service all the time. But you can also say for some work studies that this guy, I want him to use a vision, which is eye of lens measurement, and I want him to just do it for one period. So this is two months. What will be the end period? It would be not December, it would be two months. So 1st of February, that's one month. And then we have March. So it will be the end of March. That's actually two months. And I save this. So now I started 
uh, what is it, end date. The ending date of the service must be later than the starting date. Or you can see that I had the wrong year. So it actually gives you some information. It should be 2022. Thank you, system. So we have one. We have a guy who's going to use the vision for one period. And I save this one. Uh, of course, I didn't click 2022. And it needs to be to validate like this. So you can see it's actually making sure that you cannot do mistakes as I do. So we have a reference here. This is the service code. We have a vision two month, the beginning, the end, and it says scheduled start because it's not it's not active. Then we're gonna add another service. This one is gonna have an I plus two month body alligator. And the start date should be the same. It should be 2022 and hopefully then 1st of February, depending on your wear period. 1st of February. And I press save. What I've done now is I have one participant created where it's going to have a vision for ILA's measurement starting 1st of February and ending last of March, which is one period. And then I have another two months that will start uh, 1st of February, but there's no end date. So this is how you do it from this perspective. Let's also make sure that we do uh, uh, add another service for the participants. So we go in, put to the participants list again. Oh, zero row selected, go back again. And we take this one and let's do a visitor badge. And I will show you how you create a visitor badge, but also how you add a, a name to it. So add a visitor, just click add a visitor. Word of label one, it could be either visitor. And it could be um, any number and you save us. So that's how quick you create the visitor. But remember, the visitor doesn't have a service. So you can add the service here as well. You add here. You will tell the service code is a two month and you put the starting date again, depending on where you're going to do. I'm going to do the same 2022 when we go to 1st of February. And I save this one. And uh, the last thing we can show you how you do, do an area is actually the same thing. I, I'm going to skip that. So, so this is how you work on these things. You have a monthly and I can have the same person here on two different accounts. So, for example, one case would be uh, you want to have a two month uh, body dosimeters and a one month ring. They're going to be in different subdivisions because of the wear period controls the subdivision, but it also controls the, the, the clip type. So this is a slotted. So you could have a person, I am not sure which one is the best, the slotted or the alligator. He can use both for a time and then decide if you want to do that. So hopefully th th this makes sense. Uh, everything here on the, you can export. The other thing that you can do is assign a dosimeter. It's related to a visitor. So if you search for any visitor badge you might have, you can see we have some of these. I take one of those. And it says search for a participant, Nord, NO. And I search for it. And you can see everything with NO. Uh, last name should be Nord, so I can connect this to myself, Nord. And I have Nordwell. So if I click my name here, Nordwell, and I save this, remember, it's irreversible. We as a dosimeter company cannot have people changing dosimeters all the time, but a no-name dosimeter that is tested, I can always assign one time only making sure that the report in the dose report or a report into the national dose register will be good. And you press save as. So now that is linked to me. It says the bad blah, 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 starting where per is now assigned. There's also this deactivate. 
So if I do, just do a quick search here, test, oh, there's nothing here, I guess. We can go to the mapping instead. I think it's kind of easier. Go to the mapping. And let's see here, the ones I created in the beginning uh, toward Nord, this one, it's active. But let's say that the guy or, or the person decided not to join my company. I put him in here. I just want to quickly remove him. You can go in here and up on the corner here, it's something called disable. I press disable as a, you confirm the deactivation of participant. This will end all of the activi uh, activities the pers person have. So it will automatically stop all services and you just press yes. Of course, this is in French, but let's do it later. So this is the first part. The last part I'm going to uh, cover today is a little bit about the dose state and the control reports. So, so there's two things we can look at. We look at those data. Hopefully we have something here. And remember that I, I got the information uh, that somebody sometimes doesn't find the area. So the type of participant here is area or participants. Make sure that. You can also have the uh, threshold search and you can validate it. It's still something that we're working on. Uh, uh, and in the future, you should have your own threshold to search for. You have the dates and a search, and hopefully something shows up. Yes, we have one participant, whole body, 008, etc. And you can look at this from glass, and you can see that the start date and the end date for this one, uh, there was nothing recorded the first time, and the second one, we had some dose reported. So this is dose data, and you can always export the dose data. If I click export here, Hopefully it opens as well. Here you can see Porture. And some of these are in French. So if it's, you still find things in French, let us know because we're trying to improve this. And we have a monthly update on Landau Direct. So this is it. That's it. And the last thing I would like to discuss is the control report. So a control report, you can do this. You can search for all, everything you have. You're going to have to do it on the customer account level, but you can just search. And here at one point, you will get it. And either you can uh, press the dose report number. Some people would like to do this. Of course, the scaling here is something we discussed, but then you can export this one. And if you export it, you can implement it in your own organization as Excel. And you can see what it is. You can see the code, etc. And uh, the last thing is actually going back here again, go back, uh, go back to the control report and we do a search again and we go back here and we can download the same report. I press download. And this is actually where we're trying to get paperless in the future. So there should be an option for you not to receive a paper report, but use this instead. So this is actually what's sent out to you. Test customer, customer service, whatever department, you know, how many days, blah, 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 a little bit about the, you know, and then we have the control. So hopefully you find this useful. Please contact me, Frederick, for those of you know, Frederick uh, F. Nordwell at Landauer.se or Frederick.Nordwell at Fluke.com and send me questions, but also send me questions about the next topic. We expect to have an update once a month around the 10th when we implement new things. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more content.